Okay, let's look at the other thing we've talked about in class, and this is the idea of Greek architecture and their buildings. We said, hey, we know religion is important because the most important building in town is a religious temple. Okay, well, throughout their time period, Greek style and uh, buildings uh, changes over time, and they have this, but they develop this golden mean, this ideal, this two to one ratio in terms of uh, your rise of your run. Uh, ask your geography teacher and she'll, or geometry teacher, and she'll tell you about that. But we have three orders of columns, okay? And the oldest is the Doric. And we see this column is much uh, bigger, not very ornate. The entablature here is actually what we call a, uh, this region in here from the top of the column up to the, the roof line. And we have these frases in through here, and they are broken up. Uh, and this is actually the kind of uh, what you would see at the um, Parthenon in uh, Athens. However, if you want to see the little relief statues that were in there, you would have to actually go to the British Museum in London because that's where they are. Ask for Lord Elgin's marbles, okay? Later on, when we get a little more complex, we realize that column doesn't need to be that big and that dense and that heavy. We have a taller column, more open uh, air coming through here. Uh, our uh, freses now here are continuous as opposed to being disrupted over here. The capital here is this sort of scroll work design on it, okay? That's Ionic, Doric plain. Ionic, the scroll kind of design, and finally the Corinthian, taller yet still, and it's very sculpted, elaborate uh, type of capital on theirs. Okay, so here's some examples. Uh, this is some Doric architecture here. Uh, the simplest and earliest, this is again, as I said, using the Parthenon, uh, built around 447 to 432 BC. Uh, this is where they devise that idea of rules of proportion. It's impressive, it's solidarity, a uh, sense of s being very solidly built. Okay, and again, you can see here's that divisions between those, but again, these are missing. Go to London, they got them there. When you walk in the museum, say, hey, look at all this cool stuff you guys stole. Again, here's our Parthenon from a little bit different uh, view. Uh, was in great shape until the Venetians in here. Uh, uh, Turkish gunpowder during the Venetian siege blew up. Um, it was a church at one time, it was a mosque at one time, and as I said, lasted until 1687. Oh my goodness, what a shame, what a waste. Okay, here's some Ionic uh, architecture here. You can see again our scroll type looking columns here on the top. Okay, taller and more slender. Capitals, as I said, resemble real scrolls. This is part of a, a monumental gateway to the Acropolis in Athens, so behind that you would see, uh, further up you would see where uh, actually the Parthenon um, uh, is. Okay, continuing on with Ionic uh, columns, this is the Temple of Athena Nike in Athens. It uh, was built around the 420s BC uh, time frame. Uh, again, classic icon Ionic temple, rather, uh, with Ionic columns and that continuous frez up here, okay, in the frieze. Uh, not the broken up one like we saw in the, the Parthenon. Okay, Corinthian is the most elaborate type of column. Uh, these are much taller, uh, much thinner. These are actually uh, sculpted in such a way as to um, make them look, they're curved, but they're made to make them look straight from a distance. Okay, this is used mostly for interior columns and later for temple exteriors because uh, the fine detail made them too easy to be damaged just in weather events. Uh, this is the temple of Zeus uh, in Athens. Uh, as you see, built much later with other ones around 400 BC. This is 174 BC and finished in AD 132. Okay, looking at theater, this is uh, the Greek theater, um, a classic Greek theater. There's sort of half, not quite actually a half circle, it's a, a semicircle. Uh, in fact, um, when we later look at Rome, we'll see that the Colosseum is like two half Greek theaters and sort of an oval shape, not exactly a circle. Um, this is the theater in uh, Eupiterus, uh, finished about 350 BC. It's a late classical structure, which means it had stone benches, not wooden benches like earlier theaters. Um, right here, we see this little sort of area of the stage behind, or area behind the stage. This would have been structures with columns and stuff. It's sort of the backstage area, and here are the wings uh, of our traditional stage today. Okay, but of course, in Greece, all good things must come to an end. Okay, Sparta and Athens worked together to defeat the Persians during the uh, the Persian Wars and that works out well to help uh, unify the states in the short term but once their common enemy is gone they become enemies eventually of each other 
okay? They turn on them as that common enemy is defeated, okay? Something we might see in some place like, say, oh, Afghanistan. Anyway, um, this will lead to what we refer to as the Peloponnesian War. Okay, all good things must come to an end, continued here. This is the Peloponnesian War. Okay, we're talking about the Peloponnesian League, which is led by Sparta against, uh, excuse me, who has a very strong army, and they are fighting against the Delian League, led by Athens, with a very strong navy. Now, originally, the Delian League was a group of city-states with the goal of defending against any future Persian attacks. However, they moved the treasury from one of the off-islands to Athens, and they sort of become the controllers of the Delian League and other city-states, especially for Sparta, get upset about that, okay? Sparta will eventually win this war. It takes 27 years for this war to finish. It ends democracy as sort of being tried in uh, Athens, and eventually it won't be tried again for about 2,000 years, okay? What happens is Sparta, who has a strong army but no navy, gets money to form a navy, oddly, from the Persians, and goes in and defeats them. Okay, looking at some artwork here, I also wanted to show you, we talked about in class a little bit. Uh, this is Nike uh, Samothrace here, the, the winged goddess of victory. Uh, as you can see, damage here, the, the arms are missing as well as the head. And this is Venus de Milo, which is uh, Aphrodite, uh, Venus being the, the Roman term for that. Uh, and you see this idea of classical female beauty, but again, we're missing the arms. One last thing, I want to come back here to the uh, ancient Greeks here. Uh, realize people kind of say, 27 years, Mr. Pulley, I don't understand how a war takes that long. you got to understand back then it takes much longer to build the ships, move people around, prepare, uh, everything else. And so battles back then or wars back then are much different than today. There's a major battle and it might be months, several months, uh, up to a year before the next big battle in that war. So wars take a much longer time period than they do today. Okay, that's it for Greece. I uh, hope that helps you guys with your study guides, and we'll be checking those on Tuesday. So good luck, and see you in class.